The Samsung E700 with self-portrait and multi-shot. Shoot what you love. Only CNBC takes you inside the markets from the opening bell to the trading day to the closing bell. Triple digit rally. Live from the New York Stock Exchange. Pockets of strength in the financial services. Live from NASDAQ. We do have strength in some of the typical leaders. We see the S&P futures moving up a bit. Now back on Wall Street. We're starting to see a fairly good picture. The final hour of trading. Dow overcoming some heavy losses. Don't miss all the non-stop U.S. market action. Every weekday from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. on CNBC Asia. Update on how the Australian market's higher now. AMP of five percent. Breaking news from uh, Qantas. Industry insiders. Also Plenty of reason for optimism. Woolworths advancing on the board. Telstra. Yeah. South Corp's also. In the Aussie dollar continues to be the Australian well. economy. Really nice jump for Woodside. But the bigger story of the day. Major relaxation of tariffs. For what is driving this A market. lot of news coming out. If it's making news in Australia, we've got it covered. CNBC Asia. Profit from it. Welcome back to Squawk Box, everyone. China's IPO tap is cranked up to the maximum, and the flow of new listings is not going to dry up next year. Likely listings in uh, 04 including, uh, include Ping An Insurance, which is China's number two insurer, and People's Telephone a Company. Take a look at uh, this board here. In December alone, big Chinese names tapped the capital markets for well over 3.5 billion US dollars, and one of them is listing today. Demand for Fujian Zijin mining industry stock was frenzied. The retail portion of the gold miners' IPO is oversubscribed by 744 times. And no wonder, as the price of yellow metal as well is sitting at eight-year highs. Bernie, take us through some of the details. Okay, let's talk about IPOs because they are hot as Hades and definitely the flavor of the month uh, and we saw as I we illustrated a little while ago uh, the China life IPO is now uh, not just heads but shoulders above water from its uh, from its debut in the market last week uh, hitting over the five dollar level in local trading uh, went on the market at 455 it was uh, priced at 362 and a half so anybody who got into the stock including those who uh, mobilized share financing to uh, finance a uh, big bulk purchase of the stock did very well indeed, especially if they held it until now and didn't actually stag it and throw it off on uh, the first day. Let's talk a little more about the issue that's going to be in the market today because it was a blockbuster, 743, was it 744 times subscribed, and it is known as Fujin Zijin Mining Industry, a uh, gold miner, and the name means purple gold, and as um, Bettina mentioned earlier, purple gold actually has a place in the gold lexicon. This is the best showing in an IPO since 1997. 1997 saw Beijing Enterprises hit the market with uh, 1,200 times, almost 1,300 times subscription. Back then, the word China evoked dreams, fairy tale dreams uh, of uh, making big gains in the market. A lot of people who got into companies like Beijing Enterprises said, and I remember at the time because I was covering the issue, they were saying, hey, it's about all about Beijing. You ask him with a, a follow-up question, what do they do? Don't know. They enterprise. Something like that. Something to do with the Beijing government. It's kind of like Tom.com, right? Nobody knew what they did. They had a half-completed website, but it was a Lee Kaohsiung.com stock. So why not? $1.15 billion, uh, Hong Kong dollars, in money being raised in the process here. Um, and the H-share index is at lofty levels, record levels uh, right now. Uh, in terms of the uh, specifics on uh, Fujian Zijin mining, this uh, stock is being pitched at about 15, 15 and a half times uh, earnings, and uh, the uh, gold miner is going to be using the uh, the proceeds to develop uh, more of their uh, more of their ground output. It's based in Fujian Province, of course. They control about 235 tons of gold resources, two and a half million tons of copper resources. So it is not only focused on gold, but other uh, base minerals as well. 15.6 times uh, forecast 2003 earnings on a fully diluted basis 
and on a uh, it's hard it's kind of hard to pitch it against others because the only other listed gold miner is a company called Jong Sing Gold which listed I think three months ago two months ago uh, but this company is actually cheaper on a uh, on an earnings multiple basis than Jiangxi Copper which is uh, one of the big copper firms number two copper firm in China uh, Zijun has also has already guided us to expect net profits of at least 280 million yuan or 34 million uh, U.S. dollars this year, more than double what they earned in last year, and the proceeds, as I mentioned, will be used to acquire additional um, resources and additional fields in central and western parts of uh, western parts of China, as uh, as well. Um, am I supposed to be looking for a purple hue to gold? Anything that I buy my wife? For Christmas, I mean, is that is that actually yes. desirable, or is that just uh, is that just it's, does it, it's, is it no, just there no 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 it's, it's it's a trend it's a trendy thing. There, there are different trends mm. in gold. Some people like me don't like to wear gold, and so they try and get us to buy gold, which is actually purple in color. Um, it's that, wow. um, it's a it's a trend uh, fashion sort of thing. But uh, you need to head out there to the shops. Uh, Christmas is upon you, Bernie, right now. Uh, with no, me, I right. Know, I know, I know. <laughs> With me is Philip Chan of Shenyin Wanggo Securities, who's been following our IPOs in China, and he's joining me in Singapore to talk about what we can look out for. This, you know, the whole, this, this whole um, euphoria over the Chinese IPOs uh, reminds one of those massive queues you, found, you saw following the listing of Tom.com, where a lot of people had no idea, as Bernie said, what this company was mm. all about, but decided there was a queue and that they should join in yeah. uh, and, and not miss out. Are you looking at the IPO market and able to tell which ones people should queue up for and which ones they really shouldn't bother with? Because it seems like there is an equal number of companies out there. That's right. Um, yeah. yeah, it's got to that stage where uh, the it's a little bit worrying for say for uh, to see the sort of retail reaction. Um, they they're basically um, at this point because we've had such a good run in the last few months in, in new issues that. Um, they're basically going after anything, or almost anything anyway. Um, they're not really looking at uh, the, you know, the details of the issue. Um, and um, unfortunately, that's probably going to go on anyway, yeah. Are, are, you look, are there any recent IPOs that you look at and say, this lends a certain amount of credibility to the Chinese market? Yeah. Because if we go back several years, uh, at one point, red chips, were all completely hot. Yeah. That, as an investment trend, has fallen by the wayside. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's been very difficult. Say, you know, at one point, uh, domestic markets, Shenzhen, was yes. extremely hot. Yeah. That's fallen off by the wayside. But when you see things like PICC and China Live, do you say that IPOs like this have, are able to bring some credibility back into the IPO market in China? Oh, no, they, they do. The, these kind of listings do. Uh, these are more landmark, landmark type mis listings. Um, in fact, no, it's not that the, uh, the issues that we've had uh, are, are bad. Um, it's just that expectations are too high uh, in terms of, um, say, the, uh, the, forward, you know, the forward outlook for these companies. And, and um, remember, we're only, you, you're only mentioning a couple of the, the, the bigger ones, but you know, obviously there's a lot of medium-sized, smaller ones that have listed that, uh, again, um, are catching this wave. So um, we think that uh, these, type, these types of new listings are actually good for the market because they widen the base of, uh, of industries that are represented in the h show index. Yeah. Philip Bernie here in, uh, in, in, in Hong Kong. Hi, uh, you know, okay, uh, with all this attention, and, and, and the media has been kind of sucked into the glamour of, you know, the China Life type IPOs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm as well. So they're capturing all the headlines. Great Wall was all over the place. Uh, this gold company is the only story in town today, aside from shopping for purple gold <laughs> at Chao Sang Sang. Yeah. Um, you make a career, and you have for many years out of cherry picking the best that China has to offer. What is the market ignoring right now? We've done, we've played with the industrials already. We've seen the ups and downs. We've seen the text winkers and the fountain sets, and they're kind of uh, in textile spat mode with the U.S. right now. The, uh, let's see, uh, the commodities plays have already had a run. Some of them are starting to come off. What is the one theme in the Chinese market that you know about that everybody else has missed and is missing at their peril and where there's opportunity? Um, there's no, there are no, there are, I mean, no, there are no, there are <laughs> There are no wondrous sort of uh, themes out there uh, in the China market, which uh, have not been um, undiscovered. Um, but uh, the, n I, I think that, uh, in fact, when you're talking about commodities, I mean, I think the the uh, commodity plays are are still looking quite good for next year, um, even though they've they've come up um, 
a, a lot. I'm talking about the steel manufacturers and um, you know uh, coal mining um, and the the other base metals uh, manufacturers. Um, these 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 companies are still going to um, grow substantially next year, not at the rate that we've seen in this year, but you know expectations, as I've said, have to come down. Um, the demand in, uh, in in China is so strong for uh, a lot of these uh, metals that uh, we expect the, the sectors to continue continue to do well. Sorry, Bernie, you mentioned um, uh, Fujian Zijin is, is in copper as well, didn't you? Uh, yes, they are. They're, they're actually a major copper player. I mean, everybody makes a big deal out of gold uh, because that's uh, where all the action is, and that's where everybody is saying you're going to make tons of money. It's going to go to fifteen hundred an ounce. I think we heard in the last week from one. Uh, person, but yeah, they are a major gold company. So this obviously has a, a base mineral, yeah, uh, certain, which, uh, which, which, uh, which, which appeal to it as well. Pi piggybacks <coughs> on what Philip was saying. I just want to share with our viewers that uh, this is an estimate that came out from Barclays Capital, estimating that the copper market next year is going to be in deficit by three hundred and twenty thousand tons. Mm. So that that you know that yeah. that certainly uh, supports uh, what you have been saying. I want to ask you about other companies in China and what this whole IPO fever does to their attempts to raise capital for the market. Because institutions yeah. would, would say, why don't I put my money into the IPOs right now because I can rotate out of those really fast and get to another <laughs> IPO. Yeah. But there are lots of other companies which are you know, already listed companies who yeah. are seeking additional funds for the capital market. Yeah. Are they at risk of being ignored? There's some risk, yes, because uh, you know, as, um, as you pointed out, the new IPOs have probably potentially got better performance, in, at least in the short term. One thing I've always said is that though that the, the initial stages of uh, an IPO, uh, when, w once it lists, are not really indicative of the long, t of, you know, how, how it's going to perform in the long term. Um, you know, obviously we've seen very good performance from a lot of these stocks, even Channel Life, which is even beaten expectations um, uh, since since the listing. Um, but I would say that you look at what happens in about six months' time, after, and it may be actually may be affected by. Um, you're expecting ping out insurance. Um, I, I think it's going to be very soon. That that could uh, uh, affect trading um, on the other two. Yeah. Uh, Philip, we're talking. I mean, we, in this case, we're we're talking about obviously, you know, state-linked or or, or, or state-controlled companies. Mm. Uh, some of the China-focused managers here in Hong Kong have are saying, why don't there's certain opportunity in the in the so-called uh, in the so-called P Diddy uh, sorry the P chips uh, yeah. <laughs> the private yeah. chips you know I mean af after the whole Euro Asia debacle yeah. last year people kind of shied away from the privately uh, from from the That's privately right. run companies but yeah. certainly certain companies like uh, Chowda Modern Agriculture for instance uh, seem to be back in focus at, at least in the sights of some and I'm kind of wondering if you feel that the uh, the P Diddy chips are are, are attractive <laughs> in your in your view. Uh. <laughs> No, uh, it's like with all stocks. They, uh, you know, they, they, basically, you have to, you know, pick and choose. And um, I'm sure some of the uh, the P chips look uh, very interesting right now. You're right. I mean, they went out of favor um, for almost a year. Um, they, uh, the H shares have basically been the focus uh, this year. Um, the, uh, however, um, I think that uh, most most um, um, fund managers look at uh, say. They would they prefer some sort of state state con uh, state control that doesn't look it doesn't look sort of like uh, wh what you would think you know um, normally but uh, state control means that there's uh, at least some um, continuity in and say the uh, what what the company is going to do and um, also that the the state can replace management if necessary um, you know if they're not coming up to to scratch Okay, we're going to leave it there. Philip, nice okay. to see you and thank you very much for coming in this morning. Great, Philip Chan of uh, Shenyin Wanguo Securities coming up next year on Squawk Box. Colette Wong joins us once again with the latest in the world news. China cracking an alleged spying that has been linked to Taiwan. We will be back with you here with that story in just two minutes.